Hello and welcome. This is your Funky Okie. Let's play Fallout New Vegas DLC Blind Honest Hearts Episode something. Um, okay. Yeah, screw that submachine gun. It sucks. Right shotgun kicks ass. Episode 27! In this one, we're going into the Morning Glory Cave to find the. God, they did a nice. Great. They did such a good job with the skies in this game. I mean, look, it's such a nice. What, is, what time is it? Is it dawn? Uh, data? Yep. 6.30 in the morning. Sun is rising over in the east. Yep, there it is. And it's lens flaring through a mountain. <laughs> oh, why not? Let's, let's just chill and watch the sun rise. We pass like moonlight on still water. Uh-huh. Glad I got sunglasses on, right? Oh, yeah. Ah. So nice. So pretty. I almost never get to see sunrises these days. Unless I stay up all night. Okay, that's enough. But uh, this is something that I wanted to mention. Um, I don't know if any of you follow Thunderfoot. Uh, you know, science for the win and whatnot. But um, he recently posted a video. Don't blink. Who built this road? And um, is a road through Colorado, like cut into the side of the mountains. We should not be here. This place, it belongs to the father in the caves. Uh, we must not profane it with our touch. What are you talking about? The father in the caves. The holy father who gave the sorrows his succor and gave the new Canaanites his son. Many of the caves around the valley are sacred to him. And those who would trespass are punished by holy wrath. Look, I understand. I, I respect them. But we have to do this. I understand. I would prefer to leave as soon as possible, though. <sighs> anyway, he just posted a video of him driving down this, uh, this, this, like, you know, road cut into the side of a mountain through, through the Rockies. And as he was going down it, I couldn't help but think of Zion out there, even though he's in Colorado, and that was in uh, Utah, or this is in Utah, I assume. Alright, I'll be honest, this bit isn't blind. I recorded it with my mic, oh actually, talk about Providence. I, um, I was recording without my microphone turned on, because, you know, I'm a retard like that. And, um, so I made it through the cave and got out, and I went to fast travel back to talk to Daniel, and guess what? The game crashed. So I went back to see if it, if it recorded, um, huh. It's actually pretty handy. Oh, I Bad plan. Bad plan. Anyway. So I went back to see if it reco how much of it actually got recorded. And, um... And notice the fact... Oh. There... My voice isn't playing. So... I, I guess I can't help but consider myself to be incredibly lucky. And also, I know that there's a bunch of bear traps. Every time you see brambles like this, expect there to be a fucking bear trap. Oh, that was, those are both deactivated. Or disarmed, or whatever. And yeah, we got some dynamite in there, some more 45 ammo in here. Nothing else really up here. It didn't search, I didn't find those spore pods. The plus 50 to poison resistance. 
and um, you know, solid boost to health. I mean, fuck yeah. And who knows? Maybe we can craft something with it. I've still got a few levels to go, and it helps a lot of skill points per level. <coughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! That's right. Do 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 do. Pop. Oh, I didn't notice the second rig shotgun up here. I saw this one. I didn't notice that one behind me. Is there a third? No? Okay. And I wonder, I still wonder if there's a key to this place or if you're just boned if you don't have a lockpick of 50. Well, no matter. That's, well, oh, there's really nothing to loot in here. I mean, there's some scrap electronics, a fission battery, some scrap metal. Oh, wait, didn't notice this sack before. Shit, I don't need. This has got some good stuff in it. In fact, that's different stuff from when I was last in here. Definitely different. There weren't any stealth boys in there, that's for sure. And because this is interesting, I'm gonna I'm gonna spout this out. Because it's Rex, half mile northeast of Canyon Entrance. Barefoot? So through the scope, corpses walking around, finally gone crazy. Dimension maybe? I'm not crazy, they're real. God damn it, they're real. Rush me to the boat, they saw me smelling the candles, they look like corpses that didn't smell rotted. I'll be putting them out of their misery, doing for them what I never could for myself. I'll ask them all gone. And five years after that, happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday, you useless old dinosaur, happy birthday to me, happy city, what do you get to a man who has everything? A bottle of whiskey and a 12 gauge slug through the roof of the mouth. Woo! Come now, what do I have to do to prove to myself that I've lived long enough? I'm a shriveled old man, white beard, seen enough sunrise and sunset, saw the big sunset, been hanging on through the long night, 36 years now. Ridiculous. I'm not kidding myself into thinking there's anything on the other side of this. Fine. Things weren't so bad before I was born. Sharon, Alex, Sylvie, and Michael, who could have been. Thoughts of the beloved dead before dying. Goodbye, Zion. Every six. Fucking didn't do it. Coward as usual. Maybe two bottles next year. Ten years later. Twenty-four of them. Half boys, half girls. Youngest is eight, maybe. Oldest is 13 to 14. Dirty and scrawny. Been on foot a long time. Children's cliche? Struck camp on nearly the same spot as Los Mexicanos. Thirty years and a lifetime ago. I've spent two nights listening to them. English. Literate. One of them reads stories while the little ones fall asleep. They escape some place they call the school, but can't figure out where it was. What they or when they want a little one to behave, they tell them to stop or the principal will get you. The principal better not show up or blow his goddamn head off. I can still shoot straight. And there you go. So this is the old man. This is the uh, the father and whatnot. Sleep an hour. Let's cut out and see if the game crashes on me again when I try to fast travel from outside. And this time, I even have the microphone on. How about that, folks? He's learning. He's growing up. Anyway, 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 anyway. let's go. White leg attacks grow more frequent each day. I fear for our people. And for our valley if something is not done. I promise something is going to be done. So the sun's high in the sky now. Dead Yaogwai. Isn't there a hostile on the other side? A bunch of locations just over there. Uh, but that probably falls going all... Oh, oh, let's just see if we can't see what there is to see, where we see what can be seen by seeing. And no, that wasn't supposed to make any sense at all. What? Is his tongue sticking out through the bottom of his jaw there? Is that what I saw?
Yeah, I mean, look, there's a bunch of locations, and a lot of them right next to us. Well, at least one of them is right next to us. So let's check it out. Because we can. Because we're here. You know what? Daniel can wait. Not that these campgrounds really have anything interesting. You never know. They might sometime. So, Gecko or Yagwai? Gecko! Oh, here's one. Everybody remember when the Geico Gecko had Kelsey Grammer's voice? Back when those stupid commercials first started? Anyone? Anyone? Eh, you're all too young for that. Which is so sad because it really wasn't... Oh, hi friendlies. Can I get through there? No. Can I get through here? No. I can get up here though. And what does that accomplish? An invisible wall! Yay! Why the hell would they put this ramp here if it leads to fucking nothing? Except the goddamn invisible wall! There's nobody here! Get up! And you know what? Screw you. Give me back. If something of mine will help you, take it. The I hope you will do the same for me. And the stem packs. Huh. Datura hide. Datura. Dark Datura. Man, that's a useful fucking route. Yeah, excuse me. But yeah, screw her. She sucks. I want that other dude. So before we go back there, let's go back here. See if we can't find Chalk's bucket. Cut to be you. Um. Do you have any family? I do. A fine husband and three children. I miss them each day, but I take comfort in knowing they are safe. Where are they? When we learned that Salt Upon Wounds had defiled Zion with his presence, Daniel ordered the children, the old, and the sick evacuated from the camp. My husband volunteered to lead the hunters that went with them for protection. Oh. I try not to worry about them, but we have had no news for so long, and Daniel seems sad when I ask him about it. Sad and... a little frightened. Yeah. I'll talk to him. Perhaps he will. I sometimes feel he thinks he must protect me. If he has news, I would know of it. Sure. Anything else? Yeah, go back to your people's camp. Daniel was firm about... Yes. If that is your wish, I cannot... All right. So let's see if we can't find Chalky. He's right Good there. job getting those supplies to Daniel. If you were a dead horse, you'd get a tattoo for that. So like this obsession you seem to have with civilization. Let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, a man came through the valley with one of the caravans. <laughs> a tall man, big mustache. I've got his gun! Guitar. I asked what he did for his living, and the interpreter told me he was a singer. What is that? I asked. The man explained that he went from place to place and sang for people, who gave him food and shelter and care in return. I couldn't believe that there was a place in this world where a man could do that. I promised myself then that one day I'd explore that world myself. I know that guy! I got him a job! A job as a singer? Then it really is true. What's Joshua think of this? I, um, I haven't told him yet. Never had the growins. I can talk to him about it. You'd do that? Sure. Sounds smart to me. He might not get so mad at you. Um, what? Damn it! Go. I want you back! I want you to come with me! 
Well, fuck it. Let's talk to Joshua. See you here? Uh, no. Nope. He's over here. What's up, burn man? You reading the Bible there? That's nice. Welcome back. What can I do for you? So, oh wow, we got a lot to talk about. Let's, let's do the Follows Chalk thing first. He seems like he's interested in more of the world. I thought he might. It's been some time since I've visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him? Okay. Non committal in either direction. Whatever you tell him, I'm sure it will be fine. It's still his choice to make. I just want him to make it without looking to me for approval. He's a man. He can make his own decisions. And so... Yeah, what's this about a uh, courier? Caesar would never admit this openly. But he knows that I'm alive. I've killed enough of his frumentari and assassins that have come looking. I've heard one of them travels the Mojave as a courier. Most of Caesar's agents meet a fitting end in NCR territory. But maybe this one survived. I've met him, you know. I think that would put him and you in a difficult position. Caesar has agents looking for me, but he won't admit I'm alive. And even if you killed me, he can't acknowledge that. To do so would be to admit I had never died, that Caesar made a mistake. No, he lives by his lies and shall die by his lies. There is no escaping it. So, what do you know about salt upon wounds? He's a butcher. Believe me, I know the godless fire that burns in his heart. I've been burned by it myself. He's not the kind to let his subordinates do all the killing. No, he likes to have a hand in it, with that spear of his. Mm. He's fashioned himself an abomination before the eyes of the Lord. I'm happy to serve as an instrument of divine justice. Yeah, so, seriously, about that whole thing, pray, God, what are you talking about? I am a new Canaanite. We believe we are the heirs of a spiritual tradition, given to our ancestors thousands of years ago. We have made and kept covenants with our Lord God to honor his laws. In exchange, we are promised eternal salvation after this life. A day will come when our Lord returns to judge us all. Until then, we must honor his laws, and start others along the path of salvation if we can. That's why we trade with others and work the tribes. We have more than food and medicine to offer. Good news is our most valuable commodity. If you say so. Whether there is a god or not, his existence doesn't depend on what you believe or what I say. There is much to be skeptical of in this world. So it no longer surprises me to learn how many people don't really believe in anything. Ding, ding. But I believe that our Lord was made flesh as Jesus Christ and died to redeem me. And you. And the sorrows. Even the white legs. Everyone. So, um, uh, you run the show here? I wouldn't say that. I am the acting war chief for the dead horses. They look up to me for such matters, but I only have the authority they give me. Daniel is a spiritual leader and main link of the new Canaanites to the Sorrows. He's up in the Narrows right now. You mean where we are? Canaan and trade? We do. Though the White Legs destroyed New Canaan, they didn't destroy all of our supply caches. All forms of currency are recognized here. Caps, NCR dollars, even Legion coin. Take a look. Hmm. What you got? Hmm. 
what could end up being a pretty wow what is with the 45 out here Seems like they really just tried to shoehorn it in, you know what I mean? Oh, you mean I could have just bought three of them from you? God damn it. Interesting. Do you know what? Let's get one. <clears throat> hey, you know what? Fuck it. Let's get one of those too. Do I? No, I. <laughs> well, I've got plenty of caps. Do I have anything to sell? I think I might actually. Shame you don't have any fifty mil or. 50 cal, rather. I could really use that. I never use grenades. I have one 9 mil around. That's, that's, that's pretty, pretty classy. One cigarettes. Jeez. I'll keep that. Plus one to damage. Eh, sure. What the hell? I'll hang on to it. No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't. Wait, you're sitting inside? Nah, fuck it. No, they don't need those. Am I speech at 100? I can't remember. Definitely don't need those. When do I get... I don't even know. Wait, what did I just sell? No, I don't want to... I wasn't trying to sell that. I was trying to sell these. Now you owe me one. Oh, I guess not. Yeah, I got enough cigarettes now. Not ditching that though, that bad boy is a collectible. That'll do. Um, personal questions? It's not something I enjoy, but I pray to God that someone may learn from my mistakes. What would you like to know? Why? All right, why did you travel with Caesar? But you know what? Here, let me help you out. Are you in much pain? Is there anything I can do to help? You are kind to offer, but no, there's nothing you can do. We don't use cams, but I learned long ago that I'm immune to their effects. It never stops burning, my skin. Every day I have to unwind the bandages and replace them with fresh ones. Ow. Exposing my body to the air is like living through it again. But it's better to be clean than comfortable. Why did you travel with Caesar? It's not something. Are you always with the New Canaanites? I was born in Ogden, what people came to call New Canaan. Things were more peaceful when I was growing up. When I was a young man, I went out into the world to do missionary work, as all New Canaanites do. I traveled along the Long 15 and followed 89 South into Arizona. Along the way, I met two men from a group Wait, called the Followers of the Apocalypse. Edward Sallow and Bill Calhoun. They came to teach the tribes. Calhoun was a good man. 
Edward was the one who got us into trouble down the road. When we guess, he was Caesar. Kaiser. No, not then. Back then, he was just Edward. Smart man. Young, but we all were. We thought we could hike into the Grand Canyon and talk to Blackfoots. We did. And the Blackfoots were friendly enough at first. But eventually... I've thought back to that day so many times. I must have mistranslated. Something must have been mixed up. Because the Blackfoots decided we weren't going to leave. The rest is history. Assuming Edward hasn't changed it. Yeah, how'd you end up working for? This way lies the path to hell. Ed... Caesar needed me to translate. Translation became giving orders. Giving orders became leading in battle. Leading in battle became training, punishing, terrorizing. A series of small mistakes before a great fall. And I stayed in that darkness until after Hoover Dam. After I failed Caesar and he had me burned alive, thrown into the Grand Canyon. Yeah, seriously, how the hell did you survive? I survived because the fire inside burned brighter than the fire around me. I fell down into that dark chasm. But the flame burned on and on. The next morning, I woke up and crawled out of the northern edge of the Grand Canyon, that cursed place. It took me three months to reach New Canaan. It was as though the prodigal son had returned. They welcomed me like I had never left. Never done anything to shame them. Wow. The fire that had kept me alive was love. Their love. God's love. I will never be able to repay the debt I owe to them. But I must try. Huh. It's... I got one more, right? Yeah, Caesar and NCR. I try not to involve myself with matters of the Mojave anymore. All I know is from before the Battle of Hoover Dam. I think NCR. Better than Caesar, but that's not a high standard. Too much love of money and ownership. Not enough love of God and giving. Any society that derives its power and authority from the will of man alone lives apart from God and will crumble in the end. Mm-hmm. Mr. House. I had heard of him, but when we were preparing to enter the Mojave, he didn't seem relevant to what was happening. From what I've learned since Hoover Dam, he handled the Mojave tribes in a fashion not entirely dissimilar from Caesar. It's too bad. And, of course, Caesar. Love the sinner, hate the sin. With Caesar, it's often very difficult to see through all of that sin to the person inside. I can say that we were both lucky that NCR's supply lines and land routes north of Mojave Outpost were destroyed before the Battle of Hoover Dam. Something bad happened near Death Valley at a place called the Divide. NCR couldn't cut across anymore, and it slowed down the reinforcements. Terrible storms ripped entire companies apart before they even got to Nevada soil. The aftermath of Hoover Dam could have been even worse for Caesar. Really? The hell's... what's the divide? Oh, you know, it's the Continental Divide. I don't know for certain, and I don't think NCR knows either. Whatever happened at the divide was too much for them to handle. Our frumentarii told us what they saw. Only fools and madmen would march into a place like that. All roads wind down to the same spot. The grave. They said all that's left there is a gaping wound cut into the earth. Cursed and damned. No place for God-fearing folk. Yellowstone. Yeah, I'd say Yellowstone. I try And so the divide blocked all of their northern land routes? Not all of them. But they couldn't take 127 north to get around the mountains. As if Death Valley weren't enough, they had the divide and big empty to deal with. 
From what the Legion's explorers reported, the Big Empty may as well have been a wall to any living thing approaching it. Alright, well that's it. Bye. God be with you. Sure thing. Well, you know what? Let's head back here so I don't forget what I'm doing. And then end the episode since, you know, it's been a half an hour. It, don't worry, I... Okay. This has been your Funky Onky with Let's Play Fallout New Vegas DLC Honest Hearts Blind! Stay tuned for episode 28, and I hope you'll see me next time.